Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's rendition of Life Size Live. This is a live broadcast that I'm hosting, Nikhil Gore here at Life Size, uh, with uh, Mr. Rich Long from ScanSource out of uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So today we're going to be talking about business is personal. So Rich, you've been doing this for, for quite some time now, and, and I'm really excited to, to meet you and, and have spoken with you quite a bit this morning. I um, wanted to kind of get your thoughts on what what does business is personal really mean from where you're sitting? It's not a new concept. I don't do business with life size as much as I do business with Nikhil, with Craig, with Tom, Tim, with Felicia, with David, with Jordan. Uh, but it's those collective experiences that I have with working with you individually that make up the partnership of life size. So that's what business personal is. And I'm hoping that our partners and our other supplier partners feel the same way about us. That's what business is personal means. Okay. So talk a, bit, a little bit about kind of how video and I guess technology as a whole really kind of comes into play with that. How can you kind of draw the line from, you know, technology is helping here or maybe it's getting a bit in the way or, or something like that? Probably we should start with what, where we're at right now, right? We're at the headquarters of Life Size in Austin, Texas. You make killer video conferencing products, right? Right. And so video conferencing or video messaging or video chatting has changed a lot in the last years. It used to be, and around our office we still have large, medium, and small conference rooms that are outfitted with video conferencing gear. It's still a popular place to go have meetings. Our, our meeting rooms are always booked, and so we still need to be in person collaborating, sharing papers, <coughs> writing things on a board, and those are things that you can't do on a desktop or, or right. a mobile device. However, that's what's proliferated and that's what's really taken off is the is the one-to-one -one conversations that happen I walk around our office and I often see people having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people on their desktop video and that you didn't see a few year, years ago and that helps enable business being personal just before I got here on the uber ride over I was using your app having a video conference chat with somebody where others could join in so it was different than FaceTime but FaceTime is that consumer technology right, right. that we're used to using that makes it now natural for us to bring it into the business and make business personal. So I was using your app to have a, um, a three-person conference on the way in, and that felt more personal than just being on an right. audio call. Yeah, it really helps kind of the natural progression of sometimes it seems a little awkward at first when you're on video. You know, some people may not be used to that. You know, you have your generational differences and stuff like that, but then it's like, Oh, I'm using Snapchat every day or I'm using FaceTime every day. What's the difference between using it there versus, hey, let's jump into a conference room and actually have a business related meeting? I think that's what it is, Nikhil. It's those consumer natural ways that comes into the business that makes it more, um, I just said it, natural to have those one on one conversations and not have this intentional planned. It's not awkward and kind of. We still have those. We, we can't get away with the need of having those bigger conversations within a room where we're sharing dialogue with multiple people right in the same room. Mm -hmm. And we have to, like I said, uh, content share or collaborate by way of drawing on boards and then capturing information. Can't do that so much in mobile devices or not so much desktop. Um, but it's those devices and it's those ways of making it easy to connect on the desktop that has made that business uh, communication more personal. Right. And it's kind of nice to have the best of both worlds, right? You can be in an Uber and have a conference with someone. You had a conference with me earlier today and even yesterday too. It's very nice to just have that in your pocket. But then also when you get to the office or you get to life size headquarters, it's like, okay, maybe it makes more sense for us to jump into a conference right now. So I think it makes the conversation, it makes the topic you're talking about, again, more personal. And then if you're having a tough conversation with somebody and you're doing it one-on-one -on -one, again, either even if it's over your phone or on the desktop, it makes even tough conversations or challenging situations easier when you can personalize it. Yeah, and then you've got the whole thing of body language too. Like if we were just having a phone call, I could be you know, picking my nose and just doing whatever. It doesn't really matter because you can't see me. You could be picking are... your nose, Nikhil, that's right. <laughs> but hey, with video, it's like, hey, I can see you're not paying attention. Like, you know, maybe you should start participating a little bit more in the meeting or that's right. bring more value. That's right. So, that's makes right. sense. So. Good. Um, so really from the personal side of things, I guess, is how do you draw the line? Like, how do you say, okay, we're using technology for this meeting. It's going great. It's making our days more productive. It's making meetings more meaningful. At what point does it get in the way or does it get in the way? 
Yeah, I'm not, that's a good question. I'm not sure if it does get in the way. I'm not sure if you make a, a, a limit or if there is a threshold to not meeting in person versus over video. I think you just got to ha have it happen naturally. In, in past videos that you guys have done, you talked about managing millennials and you've also talked about the, the ease or simplicity of, of video conferencing. Those things have changed enough to where now it's more natural and right. I almost think you just got to let it happen there's always going to be people who don't feel as comfortable right. having a video chat or there's situations that won't involve it so my opinion is I don't think it's something that you need to limit or curtail I think it's something that just happens naturally and as that natural occurrence happens then it's more personal right right and even today I mean it's very natural we've just been talking on this uh, live uh, session here and uh, you know haven't had any any awkward moments or awkward silences, but... Um, yeah, it's funny. I'll stop you right there. You said, I, I think what you meant was record to post or record to then so archive and see later. Funny enough, uh, this is actually being broadcasted live with our life size streaming service. Yeah, I doubt that. I would have never agreed to a live <laughs> video stream. I, uh, well, I now this out. is awkward. I guess this is our, our yeah. awkward time. You're making it weird. So as we record <laughs> this to archive and post later, not stream now, um, that is, that's a very personal way That was of, in the fine print. That's a... <laughs> That's a very personal way of getting a message across. And so um, doing it uh, spontaneously or even planned live one-on-one -on -one through video conferencing is a way to do it. Recording something or going streaming live like we're doing right now and broadcasting or sending out intentionally is another personal way of doing things because even though it's not um, receiving a two-way conversation, it's just one way. It's still putting a face to a concept or a face to a conversation. Um, or if you're videoing uh, a product demonstration or what it looks like when you receive a product and you're opening the box, that makes somebody feel the experience yep. before they have it. Absolutely. And that makes it more personal. So it doesn't have to be two way, it can be one way, just like we're doing live. You live. Said just Absolutely. Now. Absolutely. It looks like we're, we're running out of time here too. But uh, I just wanted to, to let you have a couple minutes here to just any final thoughts, any closing thoughts, any things you've observed over the years and where you kind of like to see this go? Well, I wasn't a natural user of video conferencing or chat myself until just a few years ago, maybe even just two years ago. So I've seen it um, happen real time in front of us. And as a provider of technology solutions to people, uh, it's funny that I myself was a bit of a laggard in using it, but it's all about ease of use. Right. And so Absolutely. if it's not easier to use or if it's not natural to use, obviously you don't, you don't do it. You just choose to do what's natural or easy yeah, for no you. Yeah, no one will use it. And no for me, for years, it was picking up the phone right, because right. that is a personal two-way conversation. But there's something about video that makes it more personal. And the more personal we can make business, the better we are as partners. So um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you guys can make it easy for partners, for businesses, and I think that only serves you well when people uh, um, try to make business more personal. Couldn't agree more. Well, Rich, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I had an absolute pleasure. I'm really looking forward to working with you guys in the future, and uh, join us next week for uh, Tuesday's edition of Life Size Live. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.